Well, thank you again for being here tonight. We are privileged to have you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that time of worship. And so, as you can see, we're going to uh, continue on our series, uh, When Life is Un... Uh, well, it's uh, Merry Christmas Anyway. And as you can see, that tree... You know what that tree reminded me of when I first saw it? How many of you ever seen National Lampoon's Vacation? You know, like Uncle Eddie shows up with a tree? That's that tree. So that's messed up. Uh, but we are selling it after this series for, at an auction, and all the money goes to buy the tree for next year. So it's going to be awesome. So we are excited. And so as we continue in this series, uh, I hope that you are blessed, and I hope that this thing doesn't smoke you out. But if it does, I guess that's okay. Tonight, I want to talk to you for just a moment about, you know, one of the things about life is that we all have filters on our eyes of how we see life, and each person sees life differently. That's why whenever you read the word, one person can say, well, I think it means this, and another person says, well, I think it means this. And then in another season of life, we can go back to that same passage, and it means something different to us, because it's a new filter, it's a new way of looking at life, it's a new uh, philosophy of life, if you will. It's one of those things that we begin to say, you know what, what is it that we need in our life today? And some of us look at life like a roller coaster, and, we, and it's got its hills, and it's got its valleys, and it's got its loop-de-loops. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's got its loop-de-loops. And I had a pastor, whenever I was growing up, the pastor that I grew up with, he once told me, he once said, you know, you never make decisions in the valleys, because in the valleys you'll make bad decisions. On the mountaintops you make bad decisions. And I thought, well, then I just won't make any decisions at all. How many of y'all know that's pretty responsible, right? And then I started thinking about this, and I thought, you know, when we have this philosophy on life, some of us don't ever get off the hilltops, right? It's like everything is good, and as long as I don't admit that I'm in a valley, then I'll never be in a valley, right? If I don't ever admit that I'm sick, then I won't be sick. The problem is you got a 103 degree fever. You're laying in bed about to die, but you ain't sick, right? And then some of us never get out of the valley. Or, or did I say that right? Yeah, never get out of the valley. We're just always bummed out. We're like Eeyore searching for our tail, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like no matter what happens in our life, we always find the bad in it. And then some of us are just, we're just loopy. And we never stop being the loop, you know? And tonight I want to challenge you with something. Tonight I want to challenge you with looking at life in another way. I want to challenge you with looking at life like a railroad track. Two parallel lines that are going in the same direction. And that on this track, sometimes you're going to have good news and sometimes you're going to have bad news. But usually the good news and the bad news are together. And there's not this thing in our life where we're up and down, up and down. But there is a constant joy that is found in our life because we have Christ in our hearts. You see, He is the great stabilizer in our life. He is the great balancer in our life that we don't have to do this because Christ puts us like this in Him. And so tonight I want to challenge you with looking at life with railroad tracks. You know, this kind of fits inside of our life as well. It, we see it in our jokes whenever we say, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Can I just ask, how many people in here start off with bad news? Huh? Let me give you a way of doing this. Say, when they go, do you want the good news or the bad news first? Just say, give me the good news. And when they give it to you, walk away. <laughs> Don't even ask for the bad news. Just go away like, I'm going with that. <laughs> We see it in our literature. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. What's funny about that quote is I have no idea what comes after that. I bet you don't either. We see it in our biblical narrative when Joseph in the Old Testament, he told his brothers, he said, what you intended for evil, God meant for good. In other words, what you intended for a valley, God took it to a hill. And in my life, there was balance. And there was joy to be found in my life, no matter what came. Whether I was in a pit, whether I was up in a palace, I was stable and I was balanced because I knew who God was. I knew who God was. 
We see this in our own lives. We say things like, well, my marriage is good and my job is bad. <laughs> the electric bill is out of control. Kids, turn off the lights. You don't know what I'm talking about. I started telling my kids this week, I started saying, you know, the light switch works two ways. Anybody else ever been there? Nobody else. I'm the only one. That's awesome. It goes off. <laughs> anyway. So in this series, Merry Christmas Anyway, today we're going to be talking about rejoice in the Christmas season because when life is unfair, Merry Christmas Anyway, when life is unfair. I actually had that sound effect added into my sermon. That was not a, that was totally my doing. So perfect timing, by the way. I'm not trying to point you out or nothing. I'm not trying to say who it was. I don't do that. So. We're going to look at this unfair narrative in the life of Joseph and Mary out of Luke chapter 2. And we're going to be reading some, some verses together. But before we get there, I have something really deep that I want to share with you. It took me hours and hours upon study to get this. So I really hope it blesses you and it touches your heart because it's going to be deep. You know, there's meat of the word and then there's milk. This is meat. You're going to be chewing on it. You're going to want some A1. You know what I'm talking about. You're going to want some tenderizer on that steak. Here it is. Are you ready for this? Bad news happens. I know you're shocked by that. Kind of hold on to yourself for just a moment. And what we see in this story is that bad news is first along this track. Because remember, we're on a railroad track on where we're going. So let's read this together in Luke chapter 2, verse 1. It says, In the, those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while... Now listen, if I'm reading the Bible and I can't pronounce a name, I put a name in that I can pronounce. His name is now Fred. Are we good with that? All right. While Fred was governor of Syria... <laughs> God is so good to me. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went to his from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who he was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Or there was no room available for them. As you begin to look at this picture, you begin to see that as they are carrying on this railroad of life, there is two tracks. And what first one we're looking at is a bad track. So what's bad about this? First of all is the census. We're talking about a guy who was like a dictator type person. He decides to see how many people he has up under his roof. Are y'all with me so far? Up under his roof. How many people does he rule over inside of his kingdom? And it wasn't good enough that they, that they could just count. No, no, no. That would be way too easy, right? They all had to go back to their hometown wherever they were at. So what got caught up into this, Mary and Joseph got caught up into this, and they were in Galilee, which is about in the north part of Israel. And they had to travel towards the south and to get to Bethlehem, which was about 70 miles. Now, we have cars today, and we have planes today, and we have helicopters today. And if we were to get in our car and say, let's just go 70 miles, no big deal. What would we do? We'd pop in a DVD for the kids, right? We'd show like, uh, 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 what's one of the kids, My Hero or Hero or, no, that's not a movie. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's not a movie. Someone throw me a movie so I don't look dumb. Frozen. <laughs> Frozen. We throw in Frozen and the parents would be up going, you know, just driving because 70 miles is not a big deal, even if your wife is pregnant. But here's where the bad comes in. Ladies, imagine walking 70 miles. Nine months pregnant, imagine walking 70 miles. Men, imagine walking 70 miles with your nine-month pregnant wife. You thought she had it bad. <laughs> Imagine walking 70 miles in the desert-like conditions. Ladies, this would be about... this. They tell us that this was about six to seven days of walking or riding 
on a donkey. Amazing. Now, men, imagine you have arrived. You have been walking for this long, and you finally arrive, and the only find at the front of the hotel, a non-vacancy sign staring at you in the face. How many of y'all would be excited about that? Right? And as this is going on, ladies, can you imagine that the innkeeper tells you you have to give birth in a barn? So you go to a barn and you give birth to your first child in a barn. You wrap him in clothes. We don't even know where the clothes came from. You put him inside of a manger. Probably had hay in it. Probably where animals were already. Now, we're talking about Mary's son, yes. But in our narrative, we're also talking about the king of the universe. Being born in a stable, being laid in a manger. You know, I think I can sum this whole picture up with one word. That is unfair. That is absolutely unfair. It's unfair that this godly couple had to endure the painful, humiliating, unfair treatment. They deserved better. Have you ever had a moment in your life where you said to yourself, I don't deserve this. I deserve better than this. Why is this happening to me? What did I do wrong? And then someone comes up to you and says, it's sin in your life. How many of you always felt that was good encouragement, wasn't it? <laughs> right? But they, it was unfair. And let me just say this. They had, were doing everything that God had commanded them to do. They didn't mess up. They didn't go to the wrong town. They didn't go to the wrong barn. They had done everything God commanded them to do. And sometimes I hear people say things like, whenever I find God's will, everything will be wonderful after that. This narrative tells us differently. She is carrying the Son of God. You would think that God would have reserved a hotel room for them. <laughs> don't you? But here they are. It is unfair. And I want to ask you, are there times, I bet there are times when you are doing right. I bet there are times when you do deserve better. But it's not happening in your life. And I want to ask you this question because these are the times that it matters. These are the times that your character is tested. These are the times that you say, I love God and I'll follow Him wherever He leads me. And then we get to the place where we are supposed to give birth to our vision. And there's no room to give birth. And things are not working out like they're supposed to work out. And the question comes down to this. How are you going to respond to bad news? How do you respond when bad news comes your way? Because the truth of the matter is, church, listen to me. We have got to get over the fact that life is unfair sometimes. And sometimes, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me. Sometimes I am the biggest baby. Nobody else, really? <laughs> I am the biggest baby when life is unfair. I'm like, what happened, God? Where were you, God? Well, it wasn't supposed to be this way, God, but here we are. And how are we responding? Because life is not unfair. And you want to know why this life is not fair? Because it is still this life. We deal with people that treat us badly. We deal with people that even call themselves Christians that do not have the character of the name that they carry and they treat us poorly. Sometimes we have to deal with people in this life and we are still commanded to walk as Jesus did with a smile on our face and loving everyone. And it's hard. But it's how we respond. And it's important how we view life. And I know what you're thinking. I am so glad I came to church tonight to find out that we get bad news in life. We just wanted to be an encouragement to you tonight. Thanks for coming to Grace. But remember... This is a railroad. This is not a roller coaster. This is a railroad of life. And so why things may be bad on one side, there is a whole other side. And I want to read that story for you now in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. I want to show you the other side. It says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over, over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
Because I bring you what? I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and had gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby. And he was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word. They spread the word because they had found what they were looking for. They became evangelists and they began to spread the word of what they had found. Concerning what, the, what had been told to them about this child. And all who were heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up these things and pondered them inside of her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and all the things that they had seen, which were just as they had been told. Notice that these were two parallel experiences running on two railroad tracks. At the same time, at the same time bad news is occurring, the good track is happening as well. In other words, as, as Mary and Joseph are listening to barnyard sounds, there's a host of angels declaring that in the midst of this bad news, in the middle of all that is going wrong for Mary and Joseph, a Savior is born into this world. In the midst of this census, a Savior has come and has erupted into our life to change our world and to change everything about it. And I just want to say to you today that God loves to do that. He loves to mess with your mind. <laughs> he does. He loves it because He wants to know how are you going to respond? What is your character? Let us shape you and mold you. So that whenever, good t whenever bad times is coming, are we looking for the good times? When the bad times is coming, you see, because that's what God does in our life all the time. And I bet he's done it in your life as well. I bet there have been times when you thought it was done. I bet there were times when you thought it was over. I bet there were times when you said, that's it, I quit, it's too rough. And then all of a sudden God shows up like Superman inside of your life. That is a self-portrait, by the way. <laughs> I was going to show you the muscles, and then I thought, no, they'll get jealous. It's... I think the idea here is that we need to find a good balance. That this life is not heaven, but it's not hell either. We need to remember that God is still alive, He is still active, and He still intervenes inside of our life. And so when life seems unfair, don't give up. Listen to me, don't give up when things seem unfair because it may look bad and you may only hear barnyard sounds, but let me tell you something, the shepherds are coming. Don't give up. They're going to be delivering to you the message of the other side. Don't give up. Yes, it will be unfair because that's what this life is about sometimes. It is unfair. And when you know that, it doesn't hit you as bad. When you know that life is unfair, it doesn't get you as down. Because you understand, if I just hold on a little bit longer, the shepherds will arrive with the other side, the good news, the other part of this railroad track in which we live on. You can, the rest of your life, the rest of our life on this planet, you can expect good news and you can expect bad news. And if you know that, it's not so bad on you. When we know this, we don't have to postpone our joy. Because you remember what I told you at the beginning. Life is not a roller coaster with its ups and downs. There is a balance to be found inside of Christ. And so whenever you hear the bad news, wait for the good news because it's on its, it's, on its way. Because even when life is unfair, you can still rejoice. Listen. You have the decision with what you will do with bad news when it comes your way. I want to encourage you this season to rejoice. To find the gold even when bad news comes. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 says this. In him we are also chosen. Having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out 
everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. The good thing about that word everything that some of you may not know is it literally means everything. <laughs> good and bad, right? Pretty and ugly. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It means everything that goes on in your life. God is going to work it out for you. That's the grace of God. And I don't know why you're here tonight. But if you're here because, I, I don't know, maybe you're a regular attender or maybe you just came because of the free fruit. Let me say something. God loves you. And you may be going through a rough time in your life. And let me just say this. I encourage you to fall in love with this God, to accept him into your heart. Because once you do, it will not be this. If you will seek after God, there will only be this. That doesn't mean that times won't be rough. But it does mean that when I go through bad times, I know who the conductor of my train is. Yeah? Yeah. And when you know that, when life seems unfair, that is when you can say, Merry Christmas anyway. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for tonight. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you that no matter what's going on in our own in our life, you are the great balancer. That it didn't catch you off guard. That we didn't get bad news and you were like, where did that come from? That you have planned everything out for our life, for our well-being, to mold us and to shape us. And so, Lord, continue your work in our life. And may at the end of the day, we are able to rejoice no matter what comes our way. In Jesus' name, amen.